Hello people, this is Andrew with another dose of Drew here and today we are going to be looking at the Kaiser Mini Domin. Domin, whatever you, however it goes, it looks like that. Fairly well kept clean on the blade, which is nice for the black. It makes it a little bit of branding, but it's small. You got the Kaiser N690 serial number and then the name. Uh, Pretty cool little knife. Uh, I was a little bit less impressed when I first got it, but it has grown on me. That's for sure. To give a quick little bit on there. So right there's the mini doming. Quick little bit on some specs here. Six and seven eighths inches long, according to the specs. The blade length of two and seven eighths inches long and a blade thickness of point. 1 1 inches when it comes down to the blade stock which is pretty thin it's pretty nice in that sense it does have a full flat grind um 2.93 ounces according to the specs this has not been pulled apart and maintained so you're looking at it after significant use and it does look like uh, this has got this new so just looking at the action i can tell you since i first got it it has stiffened up a little bit which tells me that it probably needs to be cleaned the break-in parts well, actually, I'll tell you how I know. All right, still good action, but it's not very fall shut. Not like it was when I first got it. And now I can see right here, if you look, maybe this direction will be better. The blade is not completely centered. So before anything goes too much farther, we'll do a quick little bit on that. I believe this is T8, which it is. Give it a quick little bump. See if we can't fix that blade centering issue. A little bit. Probably needs to come apart and be cleaned. Again, that action is not indicative of when it first came, but it did break in. Especially anytime you get a coated blade, the break in is going to kind of, well, it has to happen, right? You're going to scrap, you're going to take the bearings and everything else. If it doesn't already have a race scratched into the coating, they'll scratch their own race into the coating. Um, and as they do so, all the little stuff they scratch up will get in there. If you, if there's, you know, you can rinse it out, but basically all the little, all the little debris and all that stuff stays in there. And that's what this one feels like right now. It was far more drop shut when I first got it. It's a little bit off center. I have been using it for well over a month as I was healing from a back injury and have had a couple of re-injuries. We'll just leave that to life happening. Um, I, I've grown more fond of this when i was when i first got it right it, three ounces is pretty light um well we'll do a little comparison since i just rolled right into it there first up this is not just any leak but a random leak as you can see it is slightly smaller than the random leak there uh another one just for comparison purposes is the kershaw blur as you can see it is much smaller than the blur Get little bits in there. Something else just to give a little bit of a thing. It is really close, really close in size though. Height and thickness and the dimensions in the hand are different, but lengthwise, all that sort of stuff, very close to the Ritter Hogue, the Mini Hogue, right? It is right there with it. Getting a couple more as far as size. CVV Elementum. Don't ask me where you can get the S35VN version in marble scales. I had to make that one myself. <laughs> and the Civivi Odium. Uh, very, very close once again, right in there with the Elementum. It's right in that real small EDC size, right? Right around the three inch mark. It's good to go on a size. A uh, couple more. Can't get over all these, we may as well go for it. And plus I have a new size comparison model. So here we've got the CJRB Feldspar. So again, you see really close in that size. In fact, all the knives, the Feldspar's closer to that. But just to give you full size comparison here. Here is the full size CJRB Feldspar and the knifecenter.com exclusive burlap micarta, which is fantastic. Um, as you can see, it is smaller than both, though very, I mean, it's a, it's a nip and a tuck and a point and a hair here and there for the, uh, small feldspar, that's for sure. 
and one more just to give it the my personally dyed rat number two with the frn scales again you can see the rat two just a little bit bigger in almost every way except for one and another new acquisition for me a rat one which is a giant knife and it is significantly larger than the kaiser Woo, that being said, one couple more for the books here just to get them in. Make sure you guys can see it because this is important. Here is the Spy 27 Para 3. See the size? The Para 3, though not much longer, dwarfs it in almost every other respect except for thickness. That is one thing. There is, as you can see, there is some contouring to this handle. And it is thicker on the bottom than the top, right? It's thicker on the edge side than it is on the on the palm side, on the finger side. Um, and when you start looking at this sucker is a beefy one. It is, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Because one more size comparison for you guys here, just so you can see. That is with the Honey Badger Medium in D2 with the Warren Cleaver. Always looks really cool. All right, that all said and done, you guys, this is that thickness I was just talking about, the thickness on the handle. On a knife this small, in fact, I'm going to bring something that is probably the opposite, and that is right here, the leak. In fact, if you look, the leak actually fits the back spacer. But the liner, all of that extra stuff makes it supremely thick thinner massively thinner all right i actually don't usually like that in this case i do partly because of the type of uh, contouring to it the extra flat on the bottom gives it a good purchase right i can sit like this i barely get four fingers i can get my finger on there and I can also do a pinch grip, modify with just the fingertip, right? This is this is tip work or anything like that. I can choke up, get my finger on the top of it, you know, and uh, it's right there. It's a really really nice one here. So there's there's a lot to be said for it. So there's there's that. We've got a few of these things here. Um. Once again, I actually like the thumb studs up against the liner as there's no stop pin. It is the thumb studs hitting the liner, which gives it. There's something to be said for the extra surface area, even though it's really on both sides of the liner, whether it's hitting the stop pin and the stop pin is shearing at the liner, or whether these things are shearing at the liner, these are thicker than most stop pins, right? And uh, they're in the blade and not the liner. So they're actually hitting the liner part way through. It gives it a nice bit, what I like most, it does give it a little more stability and a little bit more strength in the sense that, yeah, it's it's a little bit stronger. It's a tiny little knife. Anything you can do that would be breaking a stop pin will probably break the rest of this knife, but that's another matter. Um, it gives a nice little extra, no jimping, but it gives that extra nice little bit of flat right where you go to put your thumb in the full four finger grip. You go, like, yeah, you, you want to get your thumb really flat on it, it goes way up there. But if you're going to be doing a little bit, which this knife is, this is not a hard use knife, you guys. I'm not going to be going out and chopping down no branches with this thing. If I had to in a pinch, I could probably make a feather stick. I'm not going to be hacking through copper or anything. This is a, this is a pocket knife. This is an EDC knife, right? This little bad boy is meant to pop out, open something, shut it back down, right? Yay! Done. In that sense, this does very well. Cutting, I was a little bit put off by the square ergonomics, but really you can get that little bit, that little tuck in there, can tuck right into your hand so you can get a really good solid pinch grip where you've got that tucked into your hand and your fingers are on and you can get solid downward cuts like that. Or even this way, though the thumb being up here doesn't work as well and it gets into the thing, thing blade. You can get away, it's harder to show it on camera, but it does do that grip really nicely. Relatively thin blade stock. N690 is good. Um, it's right up there, AUS 10, VG 10, 
what you know the compositions somewhere in between there um i have no problem with it and it's a bowler steel which they're known for their cleanliness and their steel so it usually seems to do pretty good uh kaiser has all of my kaisers have fantastic heat treats um so i have no complaints there uh could always be one off but i have confidence in their general ability i was also it's harder to see it's it's really really hard to see but if you look maybe if i put my hand there, there's a little bit of shadow boxing all the way around and it is so subtle it's like a millimeter or less the white the black the liner it looks like it's just part of it it doesn't look like that there's shadow boxing but there is and it gives it some contouring in addition to the light contouring of the handle, the roundness of that shadow boxing and style is actually really surprising. Um, really, really, really cool though. Um, very comfy. For a small knife, it feels thick in the hand. It's got enough room to get a little bit of a choke up on there. If you need to get up, you can easily, without having to really shift your grip from the pinch grip straight into it, I'm going to do some tip work. It's definitely there. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's got a lot of good parts. Great access. It needs to be cleaned. I have not maintained this yet. I decided to do this video without the maintenance and I was even possibly going to do a maintenance video, but we'll see. I have had some complaints about that and I do. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. Yeah, it's a pretty shallow clip at just under three ounces for this size. It seems a little heavy too. It's not. Um, here's what I have found this to be fantastic for. Athletic shorts. A lot of other ones. <laughs> and since I just watched a video on the other one, I'll, I'll use the uh, Urban EDC F5.5 as an example. That large gap, while great for jeans and most pants, right? It's not just that one. There's plenty of them that do the same thing. Um, oh my gosh. Here's a good one. All right, it's the Ritter Hogue clip. Lots of space there. Um, doesn't actually hold on. <laughs> Believe it or not, it doesn't actually hold on very well to a thinner, lighter stretch material. This long, this long sloping part does. Slacks, a thinner pants material, something thinner that you're going to be wearing. Another thing, it is so small and the rest is so comfy. This is another one of those knives, even though it's a little thick, if you have a, you have a little uh, like hitch and timber or something or a little slip you carry on, you can easily remove the pocket clip and this is a fantastic little uh, wallet carry as well. Even though it's ridiculously thick, that is probably the one thing. The overly thickness, but it can still fit in some slips. That being said, um, as an EDC knife, it's good. As an EDC, it is pretty good. I mean, the design of it is absolutely EDC. It's got a nice drop point. This long line going along the back is unbroken. When you flip the knife out, you get the same angle. It's one clean line. It's a little bit blocky, but at the same time, it's clean. I, I really do like it. It's an Azo design. Azo, I'm not really, I'm probably messing that up. Uh, and it's really clean. It's been around a long time. It's got a lot of classic lines. It's got a lot of flat, a little bit of belly at the tip, a nice, fairly acute, but still robust tip, full flat grind. I got to admit, the design on this one didn't check any boxes for me. It's, ooh, this is really cool. But like so many other things, there's a reason why classic works and why it keeps going. It or why classic keeps going. It works. It's good. It does what it's supposed to. I have a flat. I have an easily adjustable. I know where the tip is. It's right in the point. It's got all of the lines. It's got good ergonomics for a small knife. If you don't like most small knives because they seem not to fill your hand or be too chintzy or, as a lot of people have said, it just feels too too weak. My random leak here, super slim, which I really like, right? It's a lot in there. Um, what's another one that, uh, well, this probably isn't, isn't a good comparison, but the uh, TRM Atom. Um, 
I like the thinner ones, but I tend to like contouring, which brings me to this comparison I mentioned earlier. I do like contouring, and in fact, these two knives are very similar in a lot of ways, except for, oops, I better bring it down here where you can see them all. But if anything, I would say one is about curves and one is about lines, right? Like, oh, this is all about curves. So much long, cur constantly curved edge. It's got a curved line on the back. It's got a, well, you know, not really even sure, like a teardrop sort of handle. I'm not really sure what they call that. Uh, nice, nice forward trail to get up there. The thumb studs, much like this one. I like this knife. This Domen, in fact, here's to illustrate once again the difference between the clips. This doesn't hold on to my shorts as well. My thin shorts, like a swim short or anything, doesn't hold on to it very well. This one does. And we start talking about like the thinness I had. It's it's definitely thinner. Even with the full contouring, it's only slightly thinner, which is one of the things I like about this. For a CGRB that is so small, or for a knife that's so small, the CGRB feels like it fills my hand more than other small knives. And part of that I've always attributed to the contouring, but it's also because the contouring allows for a thicker knife handle in the middle where it feels more substantial but thinner where you need to pinch, where you need to get as much of that grip close together as possible. You're fully squeezed and not way out. You're at full contraction in your hand muscles and tendons, where, which is what you're used to and what most people have practice on. That makes it really nice for gripping. For a non-heavy duty, this is a comfy knife. Yeah, the pocket clip could be a little bit better, but one of the other nice things about that little sucker right there is that it's so low it has a nice little lift but it's so low it does not produce a hot spot it's, it's a little bit sharp but it's right for me in a pinch grip it's right between those two fingers if i come back down here it literally sits on the other side of my my middle finger actually rolls right onto it just fine it hits either before my middle finger or right after it for my hand that works great. I was really surprised. And over long-term use, I was actually already, after the first few days, I was like, well, I'm not keeping this one. I am debating about that at the moment. I'm definitely debating about it um, as far as ranking, because this is a nice little knife. Yeah, the Stormtrooper is a little crazy, but I can always dye the white if I want to. I, I, can, I can dye that white something if I want to. It's completely customizable. And that's actually... One of the bits there. I mean, the mechanics are the design, classic. Absolutely classy and classic. Long straight lines, a little bit of curve, all of the notches in the right place. Again, classic and usable, extremely usable. The aesthetics, I like, I actually like the Stormtrooper. It's not my favorite, but it's different. I know they used to call it the tuxedo style. I. I think it's cool. It doesn't have the same like super duper fancy that the tuxedo style probably used to have, especially when you had like wood handles before like my Carter G10 and all this color fancy stuff. Um, but I like the aesthetics on it and really the mechanics. I, I am not kidding you guys. I have put this through its paces. I have carried this multiple times over at least a month, probably closer to two that I've had this a month and a half maybe. Um, and I have found myself using this several times. I have pruned plants with it. I have opened boxes with it. I have cut down boxes with it. I have opened letters. I have, believe it or not, cut plastic with it. I have accidentally cut a bunch of foam with it. Um, even some wood when I had to shave down um, some sticks for a, a little stake for my plants. I actually had this. I, ha I have stropped it. The edge came right back. It doesn't even look like it's been used. The coating cleaned up really nice. You might be able to see a few streaks on there. You can tell it's been used, right? You see a little bit of streaks, but I've used this far more than that looks like. The mechanics on this one are really hard to fault. Um, they, it's done really well. It's left or right. The liner lock is accessible from both sides. It is you know, more like a two-handed deal yes you can you can use your finger to flick it it is not the easiest thing but it is definitely possible harder when you're doing it on camera but you can totally do it just gotta it's just not a lot of room but that uh the chamfering or the the the, uh, the ledges there give you a little bit of purchase 
honestly, this is nice, you guys. This is right in. I wouldn't give it a full like if I if I was I was on a five star. This is about a three and a half, and I am I'm stingy on fives. Um, this is a really good. This is right in between okay and Goldilocks for me. It's good enough to have surprised me. Um, I thought it was cool by the looks. I'd seen a couple uh, other reviews on here talking about it. It was pretty cool, but yeah, it uh, it didn't really uh, didn't really catch me. But as I've gotten through it, as I've used it, no, you know, it's become noteworthy to me. It's a good knife. The steel's tough and holds a decent edge. It doesn't need to be coated, but it works good enough. It doesn't hurt it in any way in its usability. Uh, the shadow boxing, the style of this is actually noteworthy. It is well done in the style, and I won't say that to it because I'm not like, yeah, they're fancy. You know, there's very few you'll you'll see me comment too much about style. One of them is most definitely the Warren Cleavers. It just looks cool. But most of the rest of the things, there's there's not a lot. There's some changes, but knives are designed to work with the hand, so they all kind of tend to look similar because they got to work with your hand. This one does a good job of making a nice little change to a very common form factor with the, you know, the slanted back end, the square handle, drop point. It does it. It does a very good job of making classic new, different a little bit and fresh. And I like that. I like that this makes me be like, well, I could totally totally totally, you know, wear this there's there's fit and finish points for the price right it's a vanguard this thing's this thing's 50 some 55 bucks in most places i believe between 50 and 60 depending on where you go i guess it's under 60 dollars right again this is a realm right we want to start talking about competition you start it starts getting heavy which is which is why certain things need to stand out this actually Stands out as a classic. Um, I almost got a different scale. I'm glad I got this one. The micarta, I believe there was a, was it a denim micarta at some point? Anyway, there was another couple of handle scales that looked pretty good. Might have been a black micarta. Looked good. I went for this one. I'm glad I did. And honestly, you guys, for its intended purpose, I get this knife as an EDC knife. This is something that somebody on a budget that wants a little bit of style, a little bit of class, could get. You can sharpen it easy with a hand stone or basically almost anything. You don't have to have diamonds. It sharpens like a VG10 knife, which is nice. Takes a really fine edge. Can take an extraordinarily keen edge. No doubt about it. Get bolster look with a two-tone deep carry clip. Shadow boxing, contouring, extra thick so you can, you know, extra thick so your hand can get a good grip. Uh. <laughs> um and a full flat grind with no thumb stud in the path of the path of the blade the intended purpose of this is any not major but any general edc you want to cut paper it'll cut a little bit of wood it'll cut a little plastic it'll open up a it'll open up a box it'll open up a package it'll sh probably probably wood chop a copper nail but i wouldn't recommend it it will do what you you need to cut paper you need to score something you need to cut something out you need to use it like an exacto knife this thing will do it all and do it with a little bit of style class and grace and some classic lines which honestly i'm going to put this in here on a cost for value this one's really good yeah there's other other stuff out there reg you know you can get a regular um elementum with d2 for probably similar right you can get it similar to six to, to 55 or 60 i believe you can get a d2 warren cleaver for about 60 65 you know again i'm not necessarily going to recommend it over the cjrb but it definitely gives it a run for its money especially with the full fat flat grind and thinner stock um as far as taste goes it's, it's, it's hard to be the value on this is very good at $55. This is a great knife on bearings. Uh, let's see if I can get this where you can see. You can, I don't know if you can see that. It's milled, so it's light. It's got it's fully lined, shadow boxed, bolster style, customizable out of the box with white, decent enough steel, N690. It's like, oh, 
Yeah, it's good enough for kitchen knives, you guys. It's been good enough for a whole lot of knives for a long time to make a good price, decent toughness, decent edge holding. It's not a CPM 154. It's not. Um, it's not a D2. It's not. But it's close to those for cheaper. 154 CM, I would put a bit above this. I, I tend to really like that steel. But it's not a lot, right? There's a little bit more carbides. There's a little bit more of this and that. A little bit more of the, you know, molybdenum carbides, which are still softer. There's all sorts of stuff that goes with it. And once again, I am talking, I have looked at other people's work. I am not a metallurgist. Quite honestly, if you want to see one of the places where I get a lot of my knife steel information, um, knifesteelnerds.com. I cannot recommend Dr. Laren Thomas's uh, blog enough. Definitely go check it out. And you guys, if you want, uh, and I, another thing that I don't think is mentioned nearly enough is fantastic. There is, I believe, one guy who maintains it, a database on knife steels, different compositions, zknives.com, I believe it is called. I will I will post it in the I'll post the link in the description. Um, you can download the app. It is a, a cool little database where you can put in basically almost any steel, and it'll tell you. I at this point have not seen ARRPM nine in there, but that's about the only knife steel I have seen that I can't find in there. And I believe Teravantium is not there either because it's not a steel. Uh, several other things like that, like there, there's, a, but it's if there if it's a steel, mostly the Z knives has it. Enough about the steel. It's N six ninety. It's a budget steel. It's often called a, a clean VG ten, though that's not quite true. VG ten from Takafu is very, uh, very clean itself. They have a reputation for that as well. The stats are good. It's just a good little knife. And the cost fifty five bucks. It's affordable. It's absolutely affordable. Is it is. Is it as long, does it hold an edge as long as D2? No, but it's easier to sharpen and it's a little bit tougher. It tends to be less chippy. I have had D2, in my experience, is not as chippy as M390 and N690 is definitely not as chippy as D2. So you got easy sharpening, good, I mean, ridiculously good edge holding. I like a 1200 grit. I like a nine micron finish on mine when I'm sharpening the VG10. It gives it that little bit of bite so that you don't have to, you know, when you're slicing, it cuts right away while still being fine enough to just, you know, not be jaggy. Jaggedy? Jaggy probably isn't exactly a word. But anyway, I I digress, to use another Shabazzism. Um, and which will bring me to one of the last things, and that's my expectations of this knife. I actually got this knife with low expectations. It seemed a little too square, seemed a little bit uh, non-exciting, right? It didn't have any, uh, it didn't have like the, the fancy stuff, right? It didn't have a cool look. Yeah, it had some fancy scales, but like, oh, the random leak. Look at that sucker, yeah, that baby's cool looking. Oh yeah, we got the R CJRB, right? Those are cool. What do I wanna see those? Oh, that's not even, oh, we've got an axis. You know, those are cool. It doesn't, like, those are something you kind of expect some things from, you're never quite sure. And you're, you're kind of seeing what's going on with it. I get it. I really, really do. I really, really, really do. And I, I, I get it. I didn't expect this knife to be as good as it is. Which in some ways makes this almost more stellar in his, in his expectations. This is like a four star. This thing kind of slid below the radar and it's really that good. It's a excellent pocket knife. This is an excellent EDC knife. Um, I, I really can't get, I, I really can't get over it. It exceeded my expectations. I expected this to be down the middle of the road. Right. Yeah, it's OK. There's some things that you get, you know, it's 55 bucks. So you get some stuff, you know, if you want to start, you know, I'm not going to nitpick. There's places where it doesn't quite fit onto the liners quite right. You know, there, there's some things. But at 55 bucks, I can pop these. I can pop this apart, dye these scales, the white part, anything I want. I have the black there. Customize if I want. Keep it Stormtrooper if I want. Man. It's a good knife, you guys. I I had to give this overall recommendation three and a half, two, four stars. 
Um, some areas of it is four stars, some areas it's three and a half. So it's right in that okay to Goldilocks area for me. Um, just being what it is, it's, it's, it's right there. But don't let that fool you because this is, this is only maybe four, maybe four and a half. It's not perfect, but it comes really close as far as price to value ratio, right? There's other knives out there in this category this cgrb is only about a four for me when it comes to this there's other things that bring it down for me but it's it's four to four and a half as well this is and this is one of my absolute favorite small knives this is one of my favorite budget small edc knives spoiler alert i'm a fan of the cgrb feldspar uh so yeah so don't let the three and a half or anything like that this is more than okay right this is better than okay this is really good this is surprisingly good if you're looking at going that just doesn't that just doesn't do anything more like if you're one of those people who needs to buy a knife on looks i'm going to tell you this probably won't do it but you're i mean like so many other things buying a knife just on looks is kind of like picking a girl just on looks you're probably not going to get what you're hoping for um i, I it's got more depth to it and the classic looks once you start to use it the classic looks only underscore the beauty that it really has and i really want to make sure and understand it. i i have been impressed by this kaiser has been gaining on me as far as quality the, the kaiser quality is something both vanguard and otherwise is something that i have been really 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 enjoying lately i definitely am liking some of the kaiser knives as they're as i'm getting used to them and they're pretty darn good um there's probably some things that there's probably some other things that other people know that i don't know about the the dealings with kaiser um but i like what they do here i, I like what they've done other knives that i've had both vanguard and otherwise absolutely fantastic and this one is no exception to that uh and, and overall really good recommendable uh in fact i i've gone a little bit longer than i thought i was going to because i thought i was going to just end this with a quick description be like hey get this it's a good knife um it, do i recommend it over other ones uh it depends um i haven't dyed my feldspar yet but i, I i'm thinking about it right there's things about it uh there's parts of it i do and don't like um, I like the lanyard treatment way better than most. It also gives a nice round to the back when you tuck that sucker into your palm, right? For a good pinch grip. It's a nice rounding, so it's not just a flat, straight, square spot. It's kind of, there's so many little touch design touches on this that are easy to miss or not think about when you put it in there if you haven't like used another knife. And they are very well done. So kudos to Kaiser on this. Highly recommendable knife, you guys. Fifty-five dollars. The Kaiser Azo de Kaiser made Azo designed mini domen. The large domen is probably great, but I am happy right now with the mini domen. And man, oh man, is this a good knife, you guys? This is a good little EDC knife. Can't recommend it enough. Go check it out if you haven't. Uh, if you're on the fence about this, you're like, ah, I just don't know, and there's really nothing that gets you. But you just don't know. Buy it. Pull the trigger. You won't regret it. It's a well-made knife, well-designed with lots of little touches that make it great um, and a ton of other things that make it really good for EDC. Uh, and it's customizable out of the box. All you have to do is take it apart and have some RIT die. That's, that's actually really cool in this day and age. You know, when most other things that are going to be uh, RIT dyed or, or, you know, the JG10s and stuff, um, having something at this price point customizable out of the box that you can dye any color or looks cool without it really puts it in the same class to me as the cjrb feldspar um yeah there's there's some other ones like i, I don't currently have my d2 elementum right here it is uh actually taken apart right now and i'm checking out the scales um but the micarta scales uh, on the d2 version of the elementum again you can customize that right out of the box but it doesn't quite have the class of this. Other things make this nice for particulars. If you are someone who wears jeans a lot, you probably won't like that clip. Just saying. That's not gonna get over your hem 
very well. It's a flexible clip, but you're going to be bending that thing the wrong way, and eventually you're, you'll probably stress fatigue that, that bend right there, and the steel will probably break at some point where that clip is. That is a detriment if you wear a lot of jeans. I don't. A lot of thick hemmed pant pockets, anything like that. This is most, I hate to use the term gentleman's carry, but this is more of a dress carry. This is something for thinner pants, for thinner pockets, thinner hems, thinner material. It's not going to, your 501s are going to tear this thing up. Your Wranglers are going to ruin this. Um, so yeah, there's, there's all that, you guys. Uh, and please forgive me for not having, I know there's a lot of people like, hey, it's not centered and all that. Two months of flipping and using. I have not maintained this yet. I wiped the blade with a microfiber rag before this and made sure it was cleaned up. That's all I did to prep for this video, you guys. So this is literally two months of decent daily, not all days, I've had used a few other knives, of, of fairly decent use um, and no clean. And it's still smooth action, even if not fully drop shut like it was when I first got it. Once again, I'll show that on camera. Oh, breakover point. All right. Needs to be cleaned. Needs to be main maintained. Besides that, fantastic knife, you guys. This is well worth it. It's got lots of good things going for it. It's a beautiful little knife. Lots of good design. Once again, I can't stress enough. This surprised me. You can tell it in my voice, hopefully. Tell in the way I'm talking about it. I didn't expect this knife to be as good as it is, and it is really good. It's a really good EDC knife. That being said, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up before I repeat myself too many more times and tell you something you've heard like three or four times now from me. It's a good knife. It's worth the money. Lots of good touches, and if you get it, you won't be sorry. It's a high-quality, well-made piece at a decent price, and the design is top-notch. The execution is well within that price point, if not a little above. And with that being said, I don't know how else I can recommend this other than say, this is a good knife. Well worth it and well done. And I definitely enjoy it. With that being said, you guys, please, by all means, go ahead, like, subscribe, watch it twice, sleep on it, come back in the morning, get a little more of your dose of Drew. I am said Drew. Everybody have a good day.